Hi, my name is Amanda Callhan, a consultant for Lilly Endowment. This is the second video in the companion guide to the written instructions provided by Lilly Endowment for completing your 2021 fall reports. As a reminder, there are four parts to the fall reports, including a cover sheet, a dashboard with a summary of your data, a narrative program report, and a financial report. In this video, we will look at part two, the dashboard. Your designated CCI contact received two Microsoft Word documents related to the dashboard, one with instructions, the other with formatted tables for entering student and program data into the dashboard to complete part two of your annual report. All grant recipients, including school districts in a grant collaborative, should complete and submit a dashboard report. The dashboard form you will use looks like this. You will notice that it is almost exactly the same as the dashboard used in last year's fall report, but with the addition of a second column for you to provide outcome data. Remember to download a working copy of the dashboard to your own device so you can save changes as you go, then submit your completed dashboard report in Word format. As a reminder, one table of information should be completed for each of your primary goals. You will need to copy and add additional tables to your Word document in order to complete the information for each of your goals. Note that the goals you list on your dashboard this year should be identical to the goals listed in your 2020 fall reports, unless changes were made in consultation with your CCI reviewer. In those instances, use the modified goals identified in those discussions. In the box below your goal statement, there are two columns. In the first column on the left, space is provided to share a list of your primary expected outcomes for each of your goals. List each outcome on a separate line. This is your list of how things will be different or better when your goal is fully implemented or reached. These expected outcomes are the ultimate outcomes that align to the major aims of the Comprehensive Counseling Initiative. Ideally, the expected outcomes list how students or adults or programs change because of your grant work. Like your goals, these should be the same as the expected outcomes listed for each goal in your 2020 fall report, unless changes were made in consultation with your CCI reviewer. In those cases, use the modified expected outcomes identified in those discussions. The second column under goals is labeled outcome data and is new this year. In this column, list any corresponding outcome data for each of your expected outcomes. This helps the endowment to see the broader picture of how your work is moving you closer to the overall aim of the initiative. To the extent possible, list actual outcome data in numbers or percentages aligned to each of your expected outcomes. If data is not available, leave a very brief description of the outcome or state that the data is not available. Note that outcome data covers the period from the beginning of the grant through June 30th of 2021, whereas the strategies and activities data provide only a one-year snapshot from July 1, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. Below the boxes for your goals and outcomes are multiple rows for you to list the strategies and activities specified in your approved grant proposal for implementation during the 2020-2021 school year. Refer back to your approved implementation grant proposal if needed in your executive summary, budget, Gantt chart, and or evaluation plan to make sure the strategies and activities you list for this past year are the same as proposed. If you separated your strategies from your activities, that is, you distinguish specific activities for different strategies, then just list your strategies first in bold, followed by each associated activity on the line below it. You may number your strategies and activities if it is easier for you, but it is not a requirement. Finally, you are free to list any new or additional strategies activities you completed in the past year. That is new activities that were not listed in your original grant pr proposal, but be sure not to list any fewer strategies or activities than those listed in your proposal. This is because your approved grant proposal is part of your agreement with Lilly Endowment. So the expectation is that what you stated in your proposal is what you will do. We realize that for many of you, the strategies or activities that you originally proposed to do in the past year may have been delayed due to the pandemic. Nevertheless, describe all activities and strategies that were initiated, initiated or continued this school year. 
In part three, the narrative program report, you will have an opportunity to explain why a strategy or activity was delayed or could not be completed. For each strategy or activity, you will enter a series of data points, including your baseline data, your target data, and the actual year-end results from this strategy or activity. This allows the endowment to know what the starting point was for this activity, your baseline, what data results you are striving for, your target, and how much progress you are making each year of your grant in reaching your target data. This data is typically listed in numbers, percentages, or brief descriptive text. Whatever data element you choose should just be consistent across the baseline, target, and year-end results columns. In column two, next to your strategies and activities, list the baseline data for each. Baseline data are typically derived from the year prior to the first year of grant implementation, and in most cases will be identical to the baseline data you entered last year. Where baseline data prior to the first year of the grant are not available, the first available or established baseline data may be used. Column three is your target data. Target data are your expected results for the past school year ending June 30, 2021. Like your baseline data, target data should also be listed in numbers, percentages, or brief descriptive text. For example, one licensed school counselor is hired to serve the corporation's two elementary schools could be your targeted output data, while your baseline data may be none or no counselors were in place prior to the grant. If your strategy this year was to teach the student success skills lessons to all three through fifth graders, for example, and your baseline data is zero because the student success skills lessons had not previously been used, your target data may have been a 95% pass rate on post tests. The fourth column is the place to enter your year end results data. This is the actual data for each strategy activity for the school year ending June 30, 2021. Let's skip to the very last column in the dashboard, which is labeled data source or evidence. In this column, briefly list what was used to collect the data in the previous columns. This is where someone might go if they needed to verify the data you are reporting. Examples might include board meeting minutes, personnel and payroll record, records, test results, suspension rates, or other academic or similar data. Again, please be succinct with the information you enter into this column and contact us if you have any questions. The two narrow columns we skipped, the one labeled outputs and the other labeled outcomes, columns five and six, require just a Y for yes or an N for no. Use these columns to indicate whether you believe the baseline, target, and year-end results data describe an output or an outcome or both. Use the definitions on the last page or part two, the dashboard instructions, if you need help distinguishing between outputs and outcomes. In brief, output data describes what you did or the extent to which you carried out your planned strategies and activities during the reporting period. The American School Counselor Association calls this participation data because outputs verify that you are making progress in meeting the expected outcomes of your grant. Outcomes are the data that show how students or adults or programs are different because of what you did. Outcomes indicate the big picture change that you believe has occurred as a result of all of the work that you are doing through the grant. Though outputs and outcomes are both important, reaching meaningful outcomes that benefit your students and your community are the true aim of the Comprehensive Counseling Initiative. As you look at the dashboards as a whole, note that the goals and expected outcomes boxes in each of your tables should stay the same from year to year. While some of the strategies and activities will likely change, and of course your target data and year end results data will vary from year to year, the goals of your grant and your expected outcomes serve as a guide to help ensure that you are moving closer to the meaningful change you outlined in your original grant proposal. If you have any questions about the dashboard, please contact the endowment directly at counseling at lei.org. Thank you.